FYI. Behind me is the House of Parliament, but this time it's not the adults doing the talking in there, it's kids. With no preschool meals or support from teachers, children are left helpless. And we get into the festive spirit with Christmas markets, Christmas movies and more. I got an idea. Where do we start? Making chocolate, of course. Hello and welcome to FYR, your weekly news show. And this week, we've got a new member of the team joining us. Welcome, Chloe. Thanks, it's so great to be here. It's great to have you on board. So to start off with, we're going to head to the latest news from the COP28 summit in Dubai. It's a big annual climate change conference where world leaders have gathered to discuss how to tackle the climate crisis. King Charles, who has always been very outspoken about climate change, was invited to give a speech at the event. And it was pretty powerful. Check it out. In 2050, our grandchildren won't be asking what we said. They will be living with the consequences of what we did or didn't do. The Earth does not belong to us. We belong to the Earth. Young climate activists were also invited to attend COP28 to speak on the behalf of children. And we've got hold of 12-year-old Lissy Priya right now. Now, Lissy Priya is in Dubai, but she's also got to meet the King at COP28. Hello, thanks for joining us. Hi. So how's it felt speaking at COP28 so far? You know, do you feel like the adults are listening? COP28 was just the most crucial event you know, for us to climate activists, you know, for us to express and highlight the issues and the solutions. It is the only event which we can express the voice. So I am really hopeful to get a better future for all the children living in this world, you know, especially the children who are vulnerable to today's climate crisis. I heard that the head of COP28 has said there is no science behind the need to stop using fossil fuels. What do you make of this? This is an unacceptable statement from him. The IPCC clearly says that we have to keep our temperature below 1.5 degrees Celsius, you know, based on science only. So do you think COP28 has been worthwhile so far in terms of what countries have been promising to do to tackle the climate crisis? There are lots of countries who are promising but don't really fulfil their promises. They're just, you know, doing the exact opposite like it's, it's really not fair are you hopeful for the future or has cop 28 made you fearful that not enough is being done i am hopeful for the future you know even though let's just say that our leaders don't listen to our voice i would still be hopeful i would continue to fight until i achieve my goal well thanks so much for joining us lissy priya thank you bye well, now it's time for fake news or fact. Yes, I love this part. Well, you'll be happy to know that it's a good one this week. So, you know the famous painting of the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci? Yeah. Well, we saw this picture being shared online with claims that it's a rare photograph of the real Mona Lisa and da Vinci taken in 1504. But is that true? Well, we'll have the answer later in the show. Every year, big Christmas trees pop up in towns and cities across the country. Ah, but there's one in Scarborough that's a bit different. This has been put up by food charities and a well-known supermarket. It's made up of essential food items to highlight how many people will be relying on food banks this Christmas and encouraging us all to donate where we can. Thousands of kids rely on free school meals throughout the year, but during the holidays, there are fears that many will go hungry. It's a topic that recently came up for debate in one of the most important buildings in the UK, and Thomas was there to watch. Behind me is the House of the Parliament. This is where the government makes decisions about how to run the country. But did you know there's actually a youth parliament where kids can speak too? Let's find out more. The cost of living for a family of four in the region is £32,000. This is a gross disparity that will only lead to young people and their families suffering. We have the ability to represent the voiceless and to truly inspire a change in the way that young people are viewed in our society. Holiday hunger is therefore not only devastating in itself, but a cause of many of the other problems our young people face. Britain's Youth Parliament allows young people from 11 to 18 from across the UK to be in a simulated parliament. It gives young people a chance to discuss and debate important issues that matter to us. 
and to learn about the political processes. Thanks very much. So what was your debate topic today and why did you pick it? So my debate topic is holiday hunger and it's mostly about the free school meals. There are 15,000 young people back in our cities, towns and villages at risk of holiday hunger. So people that get free school meals in school but don't have access to holiday hunger schemes, yeah. when they don't get enough food during the holidays, I really want adults to hear my voice and the voices of people that this really does affect. And I don't think they are listening right now. I will call the member of the Youth Parliament from Nottingham to move the motion. This is the Speaker of the House of Commons. It's a very important job. He's the person who is responsible for the smooth running of Parliament. He tries to make sure all members of Parliament get their turn to speak. And he's a bit like a referee during debates in Parliament, which also means he's not allowed to take sides. Order! So, why do you think it's important to listen to young people, even if we don't have the power to vote yet? Because it's what young people's ideas are. How do they want to shape their future? And that's what it's about, isn't it? Let's listen to young people. They're much better behaved than the gym, but normally, let me tell you that. That's my last question. <laughs> oh, sorry. I urge you to vote for holiday hunger, to give food to starving children, and to give the UK back its basic human rights. Thank you. I've just come out of the chamber, and it was really impressive to see all the kids speak in real life. They were definitely more well behaved, like the speaker said, and I can't wait to see what they do in the future. Thanks, Thomas. Next up, we're going to be meeting some young people with some great ideas for starting their own businesses. FYI, guest reporter Joe went to check out a Christmas market in London where all the merch has been created by kids. This is the Ultra Education Christmas Fair where young people get to sell their incredible products and show off their very own businesses. As a young entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it is to run your own business. Running your own business at this age takes a lot of time, skill and effort. When did you start your business and what gave you the inspiration to start it? I started in 2020 during lockdown and I've just always loved to bake with my mum, with my grandma, with all my family. So I just thought why not take it to like something else. What do you think about sustainable businesses? I think a lot of businesses use plastic packaging, which I think it's always better to use cardboard or paper or anything that's better for the environment. Our business is Maybe, and we believe all children can recognise themselves with the toys that they're playing with. We got a doctor, we got a firefighter and an astronaut. What's it like working with your brothers? I'm going to be honest, sometimes we fight, but most of the times we work with each other. Yeah, that's good. I sell my books and these really cute crochet dolls. I decided to create this book because I want to inspire and educate young children about self-love and lack of representation. Today's event has been organised by Ultra Education and the founder, Julian Hall, is here to tell us more. So what are you trying to achieve from us? We teach entrepreneurship to kids from seven years old and we're trying to show them that entrepreneurship is a really great vehicle for them to develop life skills and to do what they love and make some money from it, which is our slogan. Wow, that was so much fun. So exciting just going through all those stores. I've got a few ideas for my business now as well. I love seeing everybody's Christmas lights go up, but it would be hard to beat this amazingly decorated house in London. And as it's the season of giving, they've been encouraging passers-by to donate to charities while they stop and have a look at the decorations. It's just the season of Christmas movies, so Chloe, what's your favourite Christmas film? If I had to choose one, I would say Christmas Carol, Muppets version. I think mine would have to be Elf. Well, Maya's actually been talking to the stars of not one, but two films that are out this month. Greetings to you all. Is Willy Wonka? You see, I'm something of a magician. Prepare to be amazed. A tape up. <laughs> the famous chocolate maker from the best selling book, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, is back. This time with a young sidekick called Noodle, played by Kayla Lane, who I got to catch up with. The best chocolate in the world. 
Hi there. So first off, I mean, congrats on the movie. Thank it was you. great. But what was it like being part of something so iconic? It's just so, I mean, like, amazing. Like, it's very overwhelming. Like, I've never done anything like this before. Mm -hmm. So being able to be a part of this is just, I can't believe it. <laughs> and I mean, Timothy Chalamet, Olivia Colman, Hugh Grant. I mean, what was it like working with so many famous actors? It was, it was so great. I felt like home. I felt like yeah. it, we just created a whole family on set and it was super fun to hang out with them. We had the best time. Now, sign here and we're all done. <laughs> all right. We eat the small bread. What? Thank you, Lou, that'll do. Pretty much the whole movie is about sweets and chocolate. Mm. So how much chocolate did you guys eat on set? A lot. <laughs> it was a lot because we had to do like take after take, but um, we have to swim in chocolate also. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was a lot. But <laughs> I, I definitely enjoyed the experience because now I can tell somebody, I can be like, hey, you know, I've swam, I've swam in chocolate before. And they'll be like, okay. <laughs> Another feel-good movie set to hit our screens this festive season is The Heist Before Christmas. Brothers Mikey and Sean stumble across not one, but two Santas. You're the man on the news. He stole 80 grand. You are a disgrace to that uniform. I caught up with Joshua McLeese and Bamba Todd, who play the two brothers. How would you describe the film to your friends? I think it's a funny Christmas film, which has a bit of sadness in and around there. But I think it would be an amazing film to watch on Christmas Eve. Rudolph will be back for me soon. Well, just in case he's held up. I'll get some blankets, food. That is kind. So what advice would you give to any people who want to try out acting? It seems really hard and grueling for the first few days. All you have to do is get through that, and then it's going to be one of, if not the best, experience of your life. You running away, Mickey? Listen, I can't run away. It's Christmas. What would you say the message of this film really is? It's not really what you get or what you give. I think it's probably who you're with. Yeah, it's more about who you have with you than what you have. We're a family, and we'll make it through this. So earlier on, we told you about something we'd spotted online, showing what was claimed to be a rare photograph of the real Mona Lisa and the painter Leonardo da Vinci from 1504. But it's fake news. Yep, it turns out that this is an AI-generated image of the world-famous painter. We know this because the first ever photograph wasn't actually taken until more than 300 years later. Now we're joined by a very special guest in the studio, Olivia Lines, the 12-year-old singer who was the star of Britain's Got Talent this year. Hello, Olivia. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. It's wonderful to have you here. So you're here to talk about your new Christmas song. Tell us a bit about it. Well, I've done a Christmas song, which I recorded, which was amazing. It's my favourite part of the year, and ever since then, I've just loved all and everything about it. And obviously, because of Britain's Got Talent, you got used to performing in front of audiences. But what was it like filming a music video? Well, it's good because if you get things wrong, you can do it again. That's what I like about it. You don't get nervous, do you? When you was on Britain's Got Talent, everyone thought you were brilliant, didn't they? Well, I get a bit nervous at the start, but when I get into it, I feel I can do it. Yeah. yeah. So what's your favourite thing about Christmas then? I love having dinner with all the family sitting at the table. It just feels happy. So what advice would you give to other young singers out there? Um, if you want to get into music, you can join choirs, plays, and that can get you into music. Well, thanks so much for joining us. It's been wonderful to have you in the studio. <laughs> Thank you. Now, we're actually going to leave you guys with an exclusive clip from Olivia's new song, I Believe in Christmas. See you next week. Bye.